Dr. Kristen here at Van Every Family Chiropractic Center. Uh, today I'm going to talk to you guys about tongue and lip ties. So many of you have probably never heard of a tongue tie or a lip tie. You've heard the phrase a little tongue tied at the moment, but don't necessarily know what that means or where that came from. Um, <clears throat> and the lack of education on this topic and the amount of people that say they've never heard of this is the reason why we have chosen to do a webinar on it because believe it or not, having a tongue tie or a lip tie can have a lot of negative effects on someone's life, on an infant, or even on your life as an adult. So my hope is that by the end of this, you guys have enough information where you can help prevent a tongue tie or a lip tie from going unnoticed and um, from not taking proper action to it. And I just want to give a little, a little bit of a testimonial for some of the patients that are here. We do have plenty of patients that have had an infant who has had a tongue tie or lip tie, and I've got a friend as well who had one and who noticed it instantly. And you know, they said it's night and day going after they get the revision. A lot of times, babies with tongue ties have a lot of um, symptoms showing you that they're having trouble feeding, they're fussy, they're hungry, they're colicky, they're not gaining weight, and their experience with fixing a tongue tie and or lip tie um, was truly remarkable for them. They said it was immediate uh, positive results. And then, and then this isn't just for people who have babies and kids also, it's for adults as well because there are many adults out there who have a tongue tie or lip tie and have no idea. And um, I'll go over some of the symptoms that they could experience also. And we do have an adult that recently got uh, a revision done about a year ago and she said that it was tremendous how quickly she had results. She um, she got it revised and her face, shape, her face shape changed immediately just because of how the muscles change and her headaches decreased dramatically and neck tension and neck pain. So uh, this isn't just a video for parents, it's one for just any adult out there, even a teenager, young adult, whatever. So I'm going to start with the basics. For those of you that don't know what a tongue or lip tie is, Basically what that is, is when there is tissue called, it's called a frenulum, it's a ridge of tissue in the mouth, and it can be either too tight or can have an improper attachment site. So I'm about to get very up close and personal, or you guys are about to get up close and personal with the inside of my mouth. Luckily, I don't get too embarrassed. So, cause I want you to know um, what the frenul frenulum is and so you guys can really kind of see um, or imagine what a lip tie or tongue tie is. So <clears throat> a lip tie, is when the frenulum is attached too close to the teeth. So I'm gonna lift up the top of my lip and I'm gonna point at the frenulum. Mine's a little bit tight up here, so you actually might be able to see it a little better. But that tissue right there, that's your frenulum. So mine is actually a little too tight. And if it gets even further to the lip, it makes it so that you can't lift your lip up very well. The tongue tie is underneath the tongue. So I'm gonna point at the frenulum underneath the tongue. that ridge that you could see down there. So there are many different degrees of severity and you can tell that I actually do have a slight lip tie and tongue tie. Um, luckily it's not too bad, nothing that I needed to get surgery done on. But um, there are times when that tie down beneath the tongue attaches too far, too close to the tip of the tongue. So can you, you can imagine if it's too close to the tip of the tongue, if it's really tight, the tongue isn't able to do all these motions. It's not able to go uh -uh, up, down. It can't do all those things. So <clears throat> it's very important that you actually pay attention to that because limiting the motion of the tongue and of the mouth is really going to affect an infant, of course, and then also it's going to have some effects in adulthood as well. So now that you guys can kind of imagine what a tongue tie and or lip tie, and I'll probably end up just saying tongue tie most of the time because most often if somebody has a lip tie, they've also got a tongue tie or you can just have a tongue tie. So I'm just going to talk, I'm just going to keep saying tongue tie. Um, but now that you know what both of those look like, I'm going to go over some of the signs that a baby may have a tongue tie. One of the big signs for most parents is their inability to latch on and to breastfeed. Uh, and the reason why is because they're not able to use their tongue to grasp and their lips to be able to grasp onto the breast the way they're supposed to. Another common, other common signs would be no weight gain because they're not able to press out milk the proper way. So it's only a small amount that's coming out. Uh, wanting to feed all of the time because of the fact that not enough milk is coming out of the breast. And also they tend to be pretty fussy and colicky because of they're not 
they're not drinking milk properly and they're fussy because they're exhausted. So falling asleep way more than a usual baby because the feeding is way much harder than it's supposed to be when they've got a tongue tie or and or lip tie. Um, there are also physical signs that can be seen on the baby as well. Uh, heart-shaped tongue is a very obvious one because if that frenulum is attached to the tip of the tongue, anytime they lift it, it's going to be pulling that tongue back. So it's going to have like an indent. It's going to have that heart shaped. Uh, after breastfeeding, because they're not doing it properly, sometimes you can notice a red crease or a blister because they're having to use their top lip so hard and press down so hard to try to get that latch. And then also a two-tone tongue. So because they have that tongue tie, the top of the that part of the tongue is touching everything like it should. It's getting that stimulation, getting that blood flow. So it's a normal color. The back of the mouth isn't having as much stimulation as it's supposed to. So the back of the tongue ends up being white. So those are some common things. Another common thing to, I guess I shouldn't say to see, because oftentimes you're not going to see the roof of the mouth. But if you feel the baby's roof of the mouth, if there is a divot, that is another physical sign that a baby could have a tongue tie. Um, and then, of course, just even seeing the tether, seeing that frenulum too tight is, is a way to find out. And I do um, want to say that just opening the mouth and looking in at the baby's mouth is not the greatest way to find out if a baby has a tongue tie or a lip tie. You kind of have to get them in a position where they're most likely going to start crying because you really got to move the mouth around. You're going to want to have them lay down so that the baby's body is head is right here on my lap though of course and then their feet are going out and you're literally you're going to take your hand under that lip and you're going to flip the lip back and you're going to take your fingers under the tongue and flip the tongue back they're probably going to cry because it's going to be uncomfortable but um that's really the main way that you can find out if they've got a lip tie or tongue tie another thing that some people um notice too is that even just when your baby's crying their mouth is wide open if their tongue is barely able to come off the bottom of the mouth it's not able to touch the roof of the mouth at all that's another sign that the baby has a tongue tie there are also signs that can show up on the mom that the baby has a tongue tie <clears throat> one common thing is that breastfeeding is very painful for these moms because the baby is not latching properly Breastfeeding is supposed to be more of like an undulating massage type of motion with that tongue and they don't have to latch so hard because they're able to use their tongue properly. And when they have a tongue tie, instead of having that nice smooth motion because they can't get that, they are grasping and pulling. So it's very uncomfortable for the mom. Sorry for the graphics because some of you are probably like, oh, don't want to imagine that. But um, that improper latch and improper way of feeding can cause a lot of pain for mom. It can cause some bleeding and irritation. Uh, some other signs. So what's interesting with the whole amount of breast milk, it can go either way. So a mom can either lose her supply because the baby is not getting enough milk. So it stops producing it thinking that it does, the body's thinking it does not need to produce as much milk anymore. But then there's the flip side of the babies that are constantly being put on the breast because they're so hungry because they're not getting enough milk every time that they're feeding then the mom may actually produce too much milk. So that can go either way. Um, mom may also notice a white creased mark on their nipple afterwards based on that improper latch. Uh, let's see here. <clears throat> let's see. Oh, some other signs that are uncomfortable for mom as well would be plug ducts and mastitis. So also some other things that you may notice with mom. So I, I think you can see why addressing a tongue tie or a lip tie is important. Uh, most of our moms really want to breastfeed their children. And it's not my goal to ever make a mom feel like they have to breastfeed or to make them feel bad that they're unable to because there are other reasons besides a tongue tie or lip tie that mom is not able to breastfeed. But um, we do strongly encourage it. So if it's possible to get the baby to be able to breastfeed when you want the baby to breastfeed and all you have to do is a revision. We definitely recommend it because breast milk is like nature's wonderful superfood that is available to a baby. It's evolutionarily what the baby wants to eat. And I mean, hey, the great part about it is super healthy for your kid. And as soon as they get older and start to realize that vegetables aren't so bad or are, are bad, it's harder to get them to eat healthy. So why not get them to have breast milk and get all those wonderful nutrients that they can while they're young? 
Um, and when it comes to the revision, uh, some moms get a little nervous because they think no one wants to have any type of surgery, even if it's really little on a baby, but it is very minor. The parents that we have that have gone through the revision, you know, they say like, of course the baby's uncomfortable when it first happens, but it's the results and what you're able to get after doing the revision um, are definitely worth it. And um, there are two types that people typically do. There's scissors and then there's cauterization done with a laser. I more so lean towards the laser just because that also can help prevent the tongue tie from coming back. And I did say prevent it from coming back. So at the end, I'm going to go over different stretches and exercises to do because if you just get it done and you don't do anything about it, there's a good chance that that tissue is going to want to tighten back up again. Uh, usually the people that are doing these revisions are pediatric dentists. That's where we have sent a lot of our patients or to some dentists we know that do the laser um, cuts for the lip ties and tongue ties. Very quick and easy. So the thing though with when you do get a revision done with a tongue tie and a lip tie, a lot of times the results aren't immediate. So <clears throat> the reason why is because before a baby is born, they are already learning how to do that sucking motion. So when they're in the belly, they're already learning to do that meaning they've already had plenty of weeks of using their muscles improperly. And then if you add that on to the time after they are born, before the revision is actually done, that's a lot of time where the muscles have learned to work incorrectly. And that neurological connection from the brain to the muscles needs to be re-strengthened. And a lot of those muscles need to learn how to work properly again. So I'm going to go over with you guys things that need to be done post revision to make sure that you speed up that process of getting the baby to be able to use everything, all their mouth muscles the way that they should. And when I say it could take time, you, some there are some babies that get this revision done and they're able to breastfeed properly really, really quickly right after. Um, but it's different for everyone. Um, before I go into the exercises, I want to, I at least have to talk about why chiropractic is important in all of this um, and why we make sure to know about it. And the main reason, you know, I always kind of go back to this with most people is chiropractic helps the nervous system and the nervous system tells everything how to function. So the nervous system is going to, these nerves in your body are going to tell your muscles how to work properly. And when the whole idea of fixing a tongue tie and a lip tie involves getting those muscles to work properly, does it make sense that you want to make sure that those nerves are communicating to those muscles the way that they are supposed to? And another example that I like to give to people is, say you are right-handed and then all of a sudden you have to start using your left hand. There's this new neurological reintegration that has to be used. Or for any athletes out there, Let's say you are a you grew up swinging a baseball bat and then now in your older life you'd rather golf. Having to learn to change up your swing when something is a subconscious uh, memory in your body, muscle memory, you have to do that re neurological reintegration again to get those to get your brain and all the nerves to communicate to your muscles to have them do what you want them to do. So that is how chiropractic is able to help these babies or even adults or kids whenever they get this revision done. That's how chiropractic is greatly able to help speed up that process so that that communication is there. Another reason why chiropractic is important is because anytime you don't use a muscle properly in your body, there's going to be dysfunction elsewhere. So when you are not using your tongue properly, there are a ton of muscles up here. If you are not using your tongue properly, you're irritating a lot of the other muscles and you can end up with issues with the jaw. The cranial bones tend to actually change shape as well and then the neck and the shoulders. So there are subluxations, which is our term for when a vertebra is out of place and it's causing nerve interference. There are subluxations that happen that need to be corrected because now things are used to being in the wrong position. We gotta make sure we get them back. So I did want to give our little chiropractic plug because some people don't understand why chiropractic, um, a chiropractor is talking about a tongue tie and a lip tie, and that's that's why. So <clears throat> now I am going to move on to some of the stretches and exercises that need to be done after a tongue tie and a lip tie. So for all of these things, I'm just going to say this right at the beginning so that I don't have to repeat it for every single stretch. For all of these, 
you want to start out by stimulating the rooting reflex on the baby. The rooting reflex is when you put your finger around the mouth or rub on the cheek here, the baby's going to open its mouth because it thinks it's time to feed. So that's how you get, that's how you start every single thing that I'm going to go over. Um, <clears throat> let's see. Okay. So one of the main things after, right after the revision is done, sometimes it's hard to get baby to immediately start breastfeeding. So what you're going to want to do is finger feed. It's a great way to teach the baby how to use those motions in the mouth properly. What finger feeding is, is you're going to do that reflex. You're going to get your finger inside the mouth, pad side up, and you're going to wait until that baby starts sucking like they would when they're breastfeeding. And then you're going to drop her milk into the mouth. Some people are also like to buy their own um, little contraption. They sell them online to do finger feeding, where it's a feeding tube, so you don't have to keep doing droppers of milk. Uh, the reason we say droppers is because the goal is that you won't be finger feeding for very long, so you shouldn't need that um, feeding apparatus for too long. Another thing that you're going to do is stretch the muscles. So I will give a little caveat before this. The baby probably won't love this but it's necessary. Uh, they often cry and it's not because it's extremely painful for them. If you think about it as an adult, when we are, when our muscles are sore and we stretch them, or if they just, anytime you stretch, a lot of times you're going to feel a little bit of discomfort. Some people like the feeling of a stretch. Some people don't. When you do this with a baby, it causes that slight stretching sensation that is uncomfortable. And what do babies do when they're uncomfortable? They cry like they're in pain. So the stretches that you're going to want to do are, especially if they've had the lip tie done, you want to continually bring that lip up and stretch it out for them because that mu we need to make sure those mu that frenulum stays stretched. So you're going to bring the thing up. Hope you all love that look for me. And then to do the tongue, this one's a little more difficult. you got to get your fingers under the tongue and pull, flip the tongue up. Some... Something that we like to recommend is when you do these, since the baby is going to get upset, have something ready to calm them down after. So a good thing to do would be to have a cold washcloth. And this is good in general for them to suck on the cold washcloth post revision to help with the pain. And, um, or you could just have them feed right after and that will immediately calm them down also. So a lot of these exercises, we don't want them to get fussy. The stretches, they probably will. The exercises, the goal is to not have them be too fussy. So one of the exercises that you're going to want to do, and with all these exercises, you're going to want to try and do them three at a time, or not three at a time, but you're going to do each exercise three times, five times throughout the day. And you're going to do this for about six weeks. And a lot of times people like to give up on the exercises because they feel like they've done it enough. Keep with it for six weeks because we don't want though the frenulum limb to get tight again. We don't want to have to go through this procedure again. So one of the exercises, this is to get the um, tongue stimulated. It's called, what we call it is just the tongue pressed down. You're going to put the finger into the mouth and you want the pad up. So when I say pad, this is the pad of your finger, this part here. So the pad is going to go up into the baby's mouth. And then you're going to press the finger down onto the back of the tongue and slide it out while you're pressing down the whole time. This gets the baby to try and push back up. So all these things that we're doing in the mouth, the baby's going to try and follow your finger, and that's causing the tongue to have to do new positions. So like I said, finger, pad side up. You bring it into the mouth. You press the finger down on the back of the tongue, and you keep pressing as you pull the finger out. You're also going to want to do a nice little tongue massage for them, and you mainly want to do it in the tip of the tongue. So this one is pad side down, so it's going to go in the mouth on the tip of the tongue, and you're just going to massage the tip of the tongue. Another one that we're going to want to do is to try and work on that side-to-side -side motion of the tongue. So to do that, it's finger side down again. You're going to go on that ridge, the gummy ridge behind where teeth would be, and you're just going to slide back and forth. And a lot of times that baby's going to follow the finger. And why this is so important is because if you think about when you eat food, you move food around with your tongue so that you don't choke. And that's one of the big problems for 
kids that don't get the revision done is choking on liquids or choking on even solids because they're not moving the food around properly to be able to uh, chew it up enough. And if they don't chew it up enough, not only could they choke, but a lot of times uh, that causes a lot of digestive issues if you don't chew your food a lot either. So that's why we need to make sure this tongue can move everywhere. So when you are moving it back and forth along the ridge, that tongue should be following you. <laughs> Another one to do is to try and desensitize the palate. So if you think about it, if that tongue was only able to come up a little bit, the top of the mouth, the roof of your mouth, the palate, is not used to having something touch it all of the time. So it's very sensitive and we need to change that. So to do that, this time it's finger pad up again. It's gonna go up at the tip right behind where the teeth would be and you're gonna press up and slowly slide the finger back until right before the gag reflex. So just remember for this, the gag reflex is going to be pretty sensitive. It's not gonna be, they're not gonna be used to having something on the roof of their mouth. So it can be very sensitive. You don't want to, you can, it's not the end of the world if the baby gags, just bring it a little bit forward and hopefully you can slowly get that gag reflex to be further back. <clears throat> and like I said before, you're gonna wanna do this for six weeks after the revision is done. Um, one thing I forgot to mention towards the beginning when I was talking about all the different symptoms, I was talking a lot about how these symptoms affect breastfeeding. And sometimes moms are thinking, you know, if they can't breastfeed for some other reason, what's the point of getting the revision done? Um, it's no big deal to me. There are a lot of other symptoms that can result as if you have a tongue tie that doesn't get corrected. And some of those are uh, a lot of times people can have TMJ issues. Uh, so if their temporal mandibular joint is not functioning properly, you can end up with headaches, you can end up with neck pain, uh, end up with dental issues also and needing to get surgery on your jaw, things like that, because it needs to work properly. Uh, digestive issues is very common. Uh, neck tension, headaches, shoulder pain, the kind of things that I did mention for the patient of ours who's an adult who had the revision done. Uh, so there's a lot of other negative effects that can happen from not getting the revision done. And for those of you that are patients, uh, I think I would hope by now you are aware that if you end up with dysfunction in your neck, it's going to work its way down the rest of the body because the body is trying to compensate for there being a problem somewhere else. So an issue with the neck is gonna to lead to the back, it's gonna to lead to the hips, it's gonna lead everywhere. So it's important, um, not just for breastfeeding, to get a revision done. Um, <clears throat> and uh, just lost my train of thought here. So <clears throat> I just wanna make sure that everybody, I, I will try and post a video, I think primarily of just the exercises and maybe go over them a little more in depth. Maybe we can get a baby involved that has a tongue tie and needs to get these exercises done so that you can all get a better idea of how these of how these are done. But if you do believe that your child has a tongue tie, uh, if you believe you have one, because it's very often hereditary, if a baby has one, there's a good chance one of the parents has one and they just never noticed, uh, please feel free to ask us. We will spend extra time with you in the office and show you these exercises and talk to you more about what needs to be done. So <clears throat> I hope that you all got enough information there, maybe learned something new. Uh, for those of you that stuck through the video, thank you very much. I know that this one was a little long, but there's a lot of information about tongue ties and lip ties. And um, like I said, please contact us at Van Every Family Care Practic Center if you have any other questions or you can post uh, right here on the video. You can ask any questions and we'll make sure to get back to you. Private message us. So many different ways of communication. And I hope that you all have a fantastic week and I will see you next time.